Hello, it's Abdul Saad, clinical psychologist at Vital Mind Psychology here in Sydney, Australia, as promised with the first installment of this new video series on the spiritual dimensions of narcissism, uh, video one, widening the lens. So in this video series, my aim is to examine and explore narcissism as a transpersonal phenomenon. Um, and what that means is looking at narcissism as something that transcends any one uh, individual person, but rather as something that affects and afflicts all of us to varying degrees. And I'll be sharing thoughts, insights, and reflections rather than facts and dogmas. So with this in mind, to get the most out of, the, of this series, I encourage you to listen with an open and reflective mind, regardless of your position with respect to spirituality, faith, or religion. Uh, you can potentially benefit from this content, whether you are religious or irreligious, whether you identify as a spiritual seeker or you do not. The prerequisite is simply that you are a human, that you, and to the best of your, your ability, you can listen with an open mind and relax or loosen any preconceived ideas that you may have. So this is not a video series which is addressing narcissism at a personal level directed to any one individual in your life, such as a romantic partner, a, a politician you may despise, a parent you are estranged from. The frame for this video series is rather one of self-reflection rather than one of Oh yes, how awful and horrible those other people are. I encourage you and myself to first and foremost look inward. So from this wider lens, we are looking at narcissism through a transpersonal lens, meaning again a perspective that transcends the individual self and sheds light on phenomena that are universal aspects of human nature. So Again, to repeat the point, we are all, from this perspective, afflicted with some level of, or some degree of narcissism, which requires insight, reflection, and working through, or purification in the language of spiritual psychology. So from this perspective, from this wider lens we're casting, we uh, do not ask, am I or is anyone else a narcissist? Instead, we ask, where is my narcissism located? Asking and seeking from a place of discernment, compassion toward ourselves and others, rather than harshness, judgment, uh, and condemnation. Because self-awareness, development, and personal and spiritual transformation, which is really my um, core value and focus in terms of my what I see is my life's work and my practice, personal transformation, personal and spiritual transformation, cannot occur in an environment fueled by hostility, dogma, judgment, and condemnation, because these uh, stances, positions, and attitudes fundamentally represent and are manifestations of fee-based levels of consciousness. So when we start to open our eyes and our heart we begin to see that narcissism is rather ubiquitous. It is part of being human and that it occurs on a sliding scale of severity from lower or minor levels to higher or greater levels where the entire personality structure can become encapsulated or corrupted by narcissism. In these more extreme forms of narcissistic pathology, where the entire personality structure has become encapsulated by narcissism, it becomes increasingly difficult to access higher states of consciousness characterized by states of mercy, joy, love, and depth of understanding or insight or wisdom. Now, it's clear that not everyone in our society has a diagnosable narcissistic personality disorder. Not everyone is NPD. Statistically, the numbers are relatively low in terms of those who would meet a strict you know, ISD or DSM definition of NPD. But 
despite this or in spite of this, if we look around us at the population as a whole, we still see and experience a sea of joylessness, a lack of compassion, of bickering, of infighting. We have, in fact, become ever more opinionated and self-righteous, whether we are religious or irreligious, secular or non-secular, whatever our worldview or appellation, it seems like it has increasingly all become about me, 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 and me, the cult and worship of the individual. So again, where is my narcissism located? And from the spiritual perspective, as seekers after truth, we begin a process of asking and seeking. But this is a process which requires guidance so that we do not fall into the trap of scrupulosity, which is an extreme self-condemnation and moralism directed toward the self, which itself can devolve into a form of narcissism, a point I'll come back to in a future video. Self-righteousness. So here may be some veiled ways narcissism may manifest in you and in me. Of course, I'm human like you. I'm not immune to these things. Um, narciss our narcissism, uh, our everyday narcissism, our garden variety narcissism, but it's narcissism nonetheless, may manifest in my victimization of myself or of others, in my workaholism, in my exaggerated humility or piety, which I must show to others, that I have to display, in my excessive need to be needed, in my holding on to resentments and to grudges, because to give them up would be to lose out on the juicy satisfaction of being the aggrieved party that is wronged, in my need to be a giver and to be acknowledged for my giving, or for many religious folk, in the absolute exclusive salvific value, value of my faith or religion, excluding the rest of humanity from divine grace, because I and my group are the elect of God, elect who God has chosen, as if the grace and mercy of God could be limited. And this last example for people of faith out there uh, is... It doesn't mean that if you believe that you your faith is correct. I'm not saying that that's narcissistic. What is veering toward narcissism is when one believes with absolute certainty that God's grace, however you understand God or divinity, absolutely cannot extend to anyone outside of your faith. That me or you as me mortals could know with absolute certainty the intention and will of God divinity, the ground of being, the absolute consciousness, consciousness which brought the universe into existence. And this is why humility and protection from spiritual grandiosity compels us to say, if we are believers, God knows best. Now, all of these can be examples and expressions of narcissism, of personal and even spiritual grandiosity. From this wider lens, viewing narcissism as a human problem manifesting on this sliding scale of severity and disorderedness, we can avoid the dichotomy of narcissism only existing out there in the world and we are victims of it, or it only exists within us and we must confront it by integrating our shadow so we stop seeing it out there in the world. Both are true. At the same time, narcissism exists both out there in the world and within us in our inner world, both to varying degrees. That is, again, the key idea. Narcissism is on a spectrum from mild to extreme. So the spiritual, this wider spiritual lens, this wider spiritual and transpersonal perspective on narcissism does not do away with the reality that extreme narcissism, diabolical, malignant narcissism, also known as evil, does indeed exist as an entity in the world. Surely anyone with eyes to see perceives the workings of such evil in our world. If you think of the horrors of child sex trafficking, of war and nuclear powers with their milita military industrial complexes killing millions, and describing them as collateral damage, and the abuse of children and of elders occurring behind closed doors all over the world. And I acknowledge that the presence of such evil 
has been and remains a major stumbling block for, for many people to believe in a benevolent and all-powerful divinity, that is to believe in, as I do, the God of Abraham, but that is a topic for another time and perhaps for another channel. So again, from this wider lens, narcissism represents a power or a force which can infiltrate, occupy, or in archetypal psychology, possess human beings. The more fragmented we become, the more we are open to being possessed by grandiose archetypes, which leads to personal and even spiritual grandiosity. We become, as Jungians would say, inflated, archetypal inflation. So we begin to see from this perspective narcissism as an innately human problem, manifesting itself on this sliding scale of severity and having its roots in our deep disconnection from any sense of the transcendent or the vertical or celestial axis, which we all feel when we are surrounded by nature. Reflect on the fact that urbanicity, living in big cities, tends to breed more narcissism than in living in nature, in remoteness and in villages, which tends to produce less narcissism. Uh, city folk tend to be more arrogant, uh, more less patient. Um, and if you take a trip to the countryside, you immediately notice a difference in the ambiance, in the people, in the feeling around you. And I think one of the reasons is that concrete jungles, urban centers and cities cut us off from this vertical or celestial access. And if you live in a city, which more and more humans do now, I think most of the world's population now lives in urban centers, cities horizontalize everything. Everything is occurring at that horizontal axis in chronos time. And we are trapped at this purely horizontal or terrestrial level, cut off and starving for a sense of the transcendent and of the sacred. Think of how you feel when you go outside of the big city, surrounded by nature, a mountain peak, the ocean or a valley. And think about the humbling effect that has and the sense of transcendence that you feel, no matter your religious or, or non-religious affiliation. So this horizontalization of reality, this op operating at this purely terrestrial material level, which is exemplified in large part by urbanicity, leaves us with only ourself, the ego, this empty husk as God to be worshipped and adored. And this is what happens increasingly in more severe forms of narcissistic pathology. So we're dealing here with narcissisms in their myriad manifestations and levels of severity rather than narcissism, period. We now worship with religious fervor our political opinions or our opinions on most things for that matter, our body image and so on. In more severe forms of narcissism, um, the individual is robbed of a core of a center, leaving them to replace any real and transcendent center with their own self as the center. So if you think about less severe forms of narcissism, we have substitutes for the real self, our opinions, um, certain aspects of our image, our lifestyle, uh, certain things that we have to shove down people's throats and proselytize about and preach about. And in narcissism, which encapsulates the personality in severe forms like in NPD and malignant narcissism, um, that's, that has become represented by the ego itself. The inflated sense itself is what is to be worshipped, to be adored, and which cannot be criticized rather than in more minor forms of narcissism, it could be a certain opinion you hold can't be criticized or a, or a political view or someone that you dislike must be disliked by everyone else, as an example. So as narcissism increases in its severity and occupies more space within the self, within our inner kingdom, any real connection to that, to a vertical axis of reality, 
the vertical or celestial axis which animates and nourishes our lives. Our connection to heaven, to the divine and to spirit is greatly diminished. Only the ego is real. Only matter is real. And the narcissistic ego refuses to have any limits set on it. And its needs are insatiable. And anything that stands in its way is simply collateral damage. So narcissism, again, from this wider lens, leaves all of us vulnerable to operating at this more horizontal, terrestrial level, cut off from the sense of the sacred, the transcendent, and thus makes us as a whole in encapsulated narcissism or parts of us in more minor forms of narcissism, uh, my ethnicity, my race, my opinion, my dietary choices, my whatever, makes them mini-gods that must be worshipped and cannot be criticised. And these gods, gods are not humble. They don't surrender. Gods don't surrender. Gods can bend reality, which is the central folly of narcissism, placing one on a collision course with, with reality because the rules do not apply to me or I am the exception to the rule or I create the rules. So what I'm hinting at here is modern secular society inherently promotes narcissism because it has all but completely horizontalized, terrestrialized, flattened reality and created en masse a spiritual orphaning and starvation. And I mean, this isn't in my prepared notes here, but think of, a, think of why someone like Jordan Peterson has become so massively popular in my opinion, he's functioning as a modern-day priest for a starving, secularized population who is starving for transcendent and for truth that goes beyond the merely terrestrial horizontal axis. And I think that accounts for his massive popularity, or at least that's one perspective. So we increasingly, increasingly live life through this truncated, disconnected, and alienated horizontal realm, uh, finding all our meaning and purpose through a purely material horizontal axis. And of course, we cannot truly do so, for ultimately real meaning and purpose must transcend the individual self and the needs of the self. Real meaning is transcendent. It has to, be, it has to come from something beyond me. So we've dealt with this anemic reality we now, we now abide in, disconnected from the transcendent, from ritual, and from tradition, uh, and from God, or whatever you want to call God, unity consciousness, the ground of being, the absolute, Brahman, Hashem, Heavenly Father, Allah. Uh, we've dealt with this by uh, creating alternative rituals, alternative ways of coping, um, substitute rituals, priests and altars, which, now we, we, which we now worship with religious fervor, rampant consumerism, obsession with our physical appearance, worship of beauty and celebrity, and addictions of all kind now act as substitute sacraments to fill the void within us. We also see the rise in an obsessive individualism solely focused on self-improvement at that purely horizontal level, improving and perfecting our bodies, our looks, our finances, and so on. And those who have reached the heights of this horizontal level, level of success will tell you that they do not find any real deep and lasting fulfillment at the peak of this summit of worldly success. It's a very lonely place to be successful by worldly standards, but to feel deeply empty and unfulfilled. It's actually a horrible form of suffering. Because when you reach that summit at that purely terrestrial level, that's when you have to face the recognition of the internal emptiness within you and me. And this is where we'll pick, we'll pick up from in the next installment of this series. And I know that this has been a longer video. I'm going to be looking more closely at the psychic emptiness and, hollow, and hollowness narcissism produces when in the next installment I, I aim to, God willing, discuss 
spiritual dimensions of narcissism, psychic emptiness, and narcissistic rage. I wish you all the best. I hope that you've gained some um, benefit from the video, and I look forward to seeing you uh, next week. God willing, look after yourselves and each other. Take care. Bye-bye.